Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. I'm your host, Jake Duffenball. With me today is our co-host, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingle. How are you guys doing? Good. We're very good. How good. are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great, thank you. Great. Who do we have this week? Today's guest we have for today. He is a puppeteer, most known as he's, he's a part of the show for who's um. Aaron Nick Jr. and Sprout, they, they also grew up with them, Lacey Town for Mary Mill for Means Well. And on other projects we will, we will we will talk about later, like such as you know, Between the Lines, The Book of Pooh, Hinoa. We'll talk about those later. Here he is, Mr. David Matthew Feldman. How happy have you here? How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Great. Doing, great. Doing good. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yes, happy to have you here. So to kick things off, we know who you are, but for those who don't, would you care to? introduce yourself a little bit uh my name is david feldman known usually in credits as david matthew feldman because there are other david feldmans floating around this world um and uh i've been working in children's media for oh you know since i graduated college or even before that so that's been a long time um as a puppeteer and writing as well um and um, I spent many years in living and working in Iceland, doing Lazy Town, uh, mm -hmm. being the mayor of Lazy Town. Um, but I've done other shows throughout the years as both a puppeteer and a writer. And I'm here living uh, in New York, as I always have. So I'm happy to be here. Nice. Awesome. awesome. Really, really nice. So can you kind of talk about your uh, background and how you grew up? Um, how I grew up? I grew up... Um, I grew up uh, nicely, I think. I grew up um, in uh, on Long Island. I grew up um, uh, really just when I was a kid, I was, I, I think like you guys, I was in love with uh, the Muppets and anything oh, yeah. that Jim did. Um, I really, and this was, you know, look, I mean, this was, this was, you know, like the seventies and the eighties when, when they were really, you know, it was all the original guys and it was, um, it was just that, that time it was like lightning in a bottle, you know, and, um, I really connected with it for one reason or another, uh, as a kid. Um, and that kind of shaped my whole, um, outlook on things. I, 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 I knew I will always wrote as a kid cause I, but I never really performed. I wasn't a, you know, I wasn't one of these kids who's always like in the school plays or anything like that. Um, I, um, I I sat in my room and I and I wrote and I wrote stories. Um, it never occurred to me to even think about becoming a puppeteer, even though I idolized these guys, uh, probably until college. Um, when I took a class where I had to get up in front of the class with a puppet and perform and I got a big enthusiastic reaction and i thought wow this is really fun and and maybe i can do this so then then it kind of became a two-track thing i was puppeteering and i was writing also um but yeah i mean anything else you'd like to know <laughs> <laughs> no yeah that was that was a that was definitely a good answer yeah thank you you answered it yeah so you kind of touched up on it but how did you first get into puppetry um well it it, it really came from this this sort of this relationship I had with all these with these characters and this love that I had for these characters, you know, all throughout those years. Um, and but and I would perform at home like for my family, you know, like for my little sister, you know, like I'm sure Jake, like you do, like you put the puppet on and you talk to your family members through it. I used to, yeah. if, if my sister, my little sister got mad at me or if I upset her for some reason and she started crying, I would, you know, she wouldn't talk to me, but I could sort of negotiate with the puppet and, and talk to her with the puppet. Um, <laughs> and, um, and that way I could get her to sort of come around and forgive me. Um, but it never, but I never did it outside of my home really. And so it, I, it was never something 
that I thought I was really particularly good at or had any kind of skill at, you know, if you do something just at home, you think, well, everyone can do this, right? And and it's not until you kind of step out and you, you, do, you do it in front of a class or something where, mm -hmm. you know, you, and I remember that college class where I had to do this thing and I thought, well, everyone can do this. It was a Shakespeare class, but the teacher was very experimental and she wanted us to do stuff with puppetry. And I did something with a little Kermit puppet, a hand puppet that I had. Um, and I got this big reaction and I thought, wow, this is something I love to do. And I have some aptitude for it. So that's like a magical moment, you know, when you find like you, you know, I'm sure you guys have had this experience. You find something you like and you're kind of good at it. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. like, then it's like, it's, it's, it's this, it's this epiphany really. So yeah. that kind of started me on the track of, of trying to get into puppetry professionally. And when I left college, um, really my first step uh, was to work for um, a puppet theater in New York City called The Puppet Company. Oh, okay. Mm. Wonderful guy by the name of Stephen Witterman, who um, was a great, uh, is a great marionette. Uh, puppeteer and a great marionette builder and when he was young he worked with Bill Baird I don't know if you guys know oh yeah, yeah. yes 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 um and and marionettes was not really my thing you know it was more hand puppets more the Muppet style thing right. but Stephen mm -hmm. taught me that and we did all different kinds of puppets that's one of the great things about puppet theater it's you know it's not just one thing you learn sort of the whole gamut of mm -hmm you know, all different kinds of puppetry. You know, we had shows with uh, hand puppets and marionettes and shadow puppets and rod puppets and all sorts of, and just puppets made out of, you know, found objects, you know, rubber balls and things like it was all over the place. And it was a great uh, education. And then, you know, being in New York, I was able to sort of get involved in, in the various television productions that were happening. Um, right, yeah. Um, and then Lazy Town came along and all of a sudden, boom, I was in Iceland and it was like this wild experience that sort of took over a huge chunk of my life for which I'm very thankful. So yeah, that's kind of the story. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So who are some of your like, well, you kind of talked about it a little earlier, but who are some of your inspirations getting into puppetry? Well, it was really those guys um you know that core group you know it's funny when when people I, I i sort of realized this you know as i got older when people you know to me when you say the muppets i don't think well the muppets are kermit miss piggy fozzy gonzo what i think is the muppets are jim henson frank oz jerry nelson richard hunt dave goals that's the yes. Muppets. The same way the Beatles are John Lennon, Ringo exactly. Starr, Paul yeah. McCartney, George yeah. Harrison. Yeah. Same way mm -hmm. Monty Sorry. Python is John Cleese, Eric Idle, you know, and all those guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Muppets yeah. are those five guys, really. Yeah. And um, and most people don't get that because the puppets kind of get in the way. So they think, well, it's about the puppets. Right. Uh, but the mm -hmm. puppets are just these things that sit in drawers. I mean, it's it's about those people. And yeah. I really connected with those guys because it wouldn't because it wouldn't because it wouldn't be the Muppets without them. Mm -mm. Right. It, well, mm -hmm. because it, those characters are are them. It came yeah. from them. It came from right. it, their aspects of their personalities, um, which to which for me is why it was so exciting and why now you know, not to disparage anyone, it's sort of, it, it, it's, it's a more hollow experience. It's, it's, um, again, not to disparage anyone, but there's something about in puppetry, which is really the only art form that does this, where a piece of your personality is coming out, it's being mm -hmm. revealed, you know, mm -hmm. there was something in Frank Oz, some part of him deep down inside that was Miss Piggy. And it's watching that come out, that revealing, that's that I think is electric. That's that that's really what made it exciting. Yeah. Now you're getting the opposite. Now you're getting guys who are bringing it in. They see Miss Piggy on the outside and they 
and they bring it into them, they, they copy it. They imper- It's an impersonation. And that's not as exciting to me. So, mm-hmm. you know, and they're doing a great job and everything. But um, for me, it was those original guys that that revealing of those personalities that sort of taught me everything about manipulation, about comedy, about writing, uh, about creating characters, about drama, about performance, everything. So growing up, Mm -hmm. did you have any favorite Muppet projects? Um, I think that, that the golden years were like late 70s to very early 80s so right in the sweet yeah. spot there is the muppet movie oh yeah yeah i think yeah. it's probably maybe the best thing they ever did um it's just perfect oh yeah definitely and, absolutely and i you know for me i i remember seeing it i mean i was six years old um no was I six? Yes, five or six years old, maybe five. Um, and I remember sitting there glued to the screen, um, just just like a religious experience, you know. <laughs> um, everything about it is perfect. The characters are are right in their sweet spot. There's that perfect combination, I think, about of in that period of how the characters were being performed and the look of the characters. You know, in puppetry, that's really important, I guess, in animation, too, to get the the, the performance and the, the visual sort of to get them to really click together. Um, yeah. And I think it, that was really happening there. Um, and the, uh, the music is beautiful, obviously. Um, it was just perfect. It was like it wasn't even made. It was like. Mm-hmm. birthed or something it just <laughs> yeah. god yeah god shot it down from the, the heavens or something it was just it was it was amazing um that's my favorite yeah. if you had to ask me to pick one thing that would be it yeah same I'll that's pick, that's one of my favorites as well yeah, choice. that's my personal favorite yeah <laughs> yes yes for sure can you talk about how you began working on lazy town so lazy town uh, like like anything came as an audition you know i went into nickelodeon uh in in new york and auditioned um and i i guess i knew it was going to be shot in iceland but i wasn't thinking about that you know when you go into an audition you just kind of yeah. you go just for the sake of auditioning you don't even think you're going to get it um you, you don't think that far in advance you just go in to meet people and to get through because auditioning is a skill right and the more yeah. you do it the better you get at it um so i just went in to kind of just to audition for the sake of auditioning um but i remember i auditioned for all of the puppet characters and they had little mm-hmm. paragraphs little um you know bits of dialogue little monologues for each character mm-hmm. Um, and I auditioned for each of them, but I knew that of the, what is it, six characters that the mayor was the one that I could probably have the most fun with, um, for me personally. Um, and then, and then a couple of weeks later, I got a call back to come back and audition again, this time specifically for the mayor. Um, and I went in and I auditioned for the mayor and that's when, I met Magnus for the first time. He was there. Wow. And, wow. Mm. And that was a weird audition because it happened. It was so fast. I was like out of the elevator back into the elevator within like 15 minutes or something. Oh. So I I figured mm. like I didn't get it. But then like I guess like two weeks later, I got a call that they wanted me to come to Iceland and, and be the mayor. So I was very excited. It was a huge it was a huge thing because not only was it getting this big show, which I knew was right. going to be big because it was going to be on Nickelodeon, right? Yeah. Um, but it was also packing up and and leaving my life and going to Iceland, you know, a place I had barely heard of before. I mean, it was just, it wasn't like, mm-hmm. oh, you're going to Canada or you're going to Mexico or whatever, you know, places that I was semi-familiar with. This was iceland some it was like a mythical land somewhere in the ocean you know so it was all very 
it was overwhelming and it continued to be overwhelming after we got there because it was just, it was this huge operation. Um, but um, anyway, that's how it started. Speaking of Iceland, uh, what was your experience, you know, filming there? Um, it was, it was fantastic. I mean, we were there for, I was there for a long time, you know, a good couple of years. And so you're, you're in any place for a good couple of years and you, and it becomes home, you know, um, you get used to it, you get familiar with it, even, you know, at, at first it's very strange. Um, yeah. it's, I don't know how much you know about it, but it's a, it's a volcanic Island. So, you know, like Hawaii, except it's up way, way up North. So it's, it's cold and the a lava is covered with snow and there are glaciers, you know, off in the distance and, wow. And it even smells different because there's a lot of sulfur in the atmosphere. Um, and there, it's almost like being on another planet. And it yeah. does take a while to get used to. But fortunately, they drive on the right side of the road. Um, everyone there, even though Icelandic is the national language, they all learn to speak English fairly early. Um, I think starting around third grade. So you could talk to pretty much everybody. Um, they love American movies. So like every corner, you know, every street has a movie theater you can go to and, 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 you know, see some crappy American movie to make yourself feel at home. Um, <laughs> when I was there, there was plenty of Burger Kings and McDonald's to make you feel at home. Although they have since kicked them out of the country. Um, so you know, there was a little bit strange and a little bit familiar, and eventually I just got used to it. And I and I ended up really loving a lot of the people there, a lot of the people that we worked with. You know, I became very close to. They've become very dear to me. I miss them terribly now that I'm not there. Um, so you know, it's a, it was a wonderful experience, a lesson in how you know home is where you find it. Mm -hmm. Sort of right, yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. definitely, exactly. Definitely. So, you know, working on Lazy Town, what was it like meeting everyone for the first time, like the other puppeteers and the rest of the cast and the crew? Um, some of the puppeteers I knew already from working in New York. Right. Um, some were new to me because we had two puppeteers in the beginning who were from the UK. I had never met them before. And um, we had one Icelandic puppeteer uh Gumi Thor who played Ziggy um so I had never met him before although I think I did meet him once in a in a Muppet like training workshop years before but I'm not sure um and um and it was great because we were all sort of in the same boat in Iceland you know we were all you know strangers in a strange land we were you know we had to kind of huddle together because it was all we were all you know, the new, the new people. And we, we all, we, we were trying to figure things out together, you mm -hmm. know, the show and the country. Um, and uh, uh, one of the people who was really great at sort of making us feel at home and uh, welcoming us to the country and making us feel at home in the production was Stefan Carl. Yeah. Oh. Um, Stefan was, was yeah. so wonderful at sort of understanding and intuiting what, we were going through, yeah. you know, how hard it was for us in the beginning, at least, and opening up his home to us and, and really aligning himself with us as performers. Cause he was such a, an actor's actor. He loved being an actor and he, he really, that's how he, he identified himself as a performer. Yeah. And so we were performers. And so we were part of mm -hmm. his family immediately. Um, and he was great at sort of, at, at smoothing things over in the in the beginning mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. you know speaking of you mentioned stuff and you know can you share any of your fondest you know memories working with him oh there are so many um he um he was so good at what he did right mm -hmm. um and and he um he just he loved performing he loved playing around and that's exactly yeah. what you want, you know, in a scene partner. Definitely. Um, and I remember, I the one one of the things I remember is, you know, just as a little thing, is that um, we were doing a show where um, 
I think it was called Princess Stephanie, where oh, uh, yeah. where yeah. Uh, it, it had sort of like this storybook castle theme to it. Yeah. And, yeah. and Robbie dressed up as this this like this liege or whatever with, you know, the tights and the, yeah. and the he had, I think. And, and he had a staff and the staff, like everything in Lazy Town, had this at the end of it had it um instead of just like a a ball or a crystal or something it had this ice cream cone uh, it was like a double decker or triple scoop ice cream cone right that they had sculpted that looked like it was kind of dripping it was beautiful like everything they did and um i remember we were doing this one scene where it was in the throne room and he's sitting on the throne at one end of the room and i had to come in from the other end of the room um, and so I'm sitting there on this rolly cart that we had when we couldn't stand up and we had to be on our backs. And I'm I'm sitting there with the mayor. I'm waiting for them to light it, what, what, uh, you know, whatever. And I'm looking across the room at Stefan, who's sitting in the throne, doing the same thing, waiting. Um, and um, he didn't know that anyone was watching him. No one was watching him except for me. But he started playing with this ice cream cone on his staff and he started to do this like little kind of Charlie Chaplin-esque dance where like the like the, the cone, he was pretending the cone just was, you know, was dripping. And so he would run and he would catch it <laughs> and he would do this whole little choreography and it was beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it deserved to be its own episode. Like he was just, you believed that this cone was dripping ice cream and it was exquisite and and i felt so privileged and special because out of the corner of my eye i was the only one i think who got to witness this um but that's sort of an example of of kind of how inventive he was and how playful he was and how much he just loved coming up with stuff do you have a favorite episode and song from lazy town oh gosh um yeah the one that I like that I think was the best was um, we, we did a show in a museum. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. And the reason I like that was because, first of all, the museum was gorgeous. And I don't think you could even see half of it on television. Like the stuff these guys did, they did like this dinosaur skeleton. Um, they made this whole dinosaur skeleton, but it was a lazy town dinosaur skeleton. So the dinosaur was sleeping and all of its vertebrae uh, on its tail were Z's. So it's like, you know, <laughs> it's amazing. It was, it was genius. And I don't even know if you could see that on television. I mean, the work that it took to design this thing and to construct it was just incredible. Oh, I um, bet. And they yeah. had all, everything in the museum was great. I liked sort of being in new sets because it made things different. But also that mm -hmm. was an episode where I think that they realized it was too long for a half an hour. So they decided to add scenes and make it a, like a two-parter. And that gave it this breathing space that you know, that, that I, that I really appreciated because a lot the lazy 10 episodes usually were too long and they would cut them down to a half hour and it would be <laughs> like this pinball machine, a brrr, you know, for 22 minutes. And what I like, especially as a performer is sort of being subtle and getting in these little jokes and taking some time and having, you know, letting the characters breathe, letting the scene breathe. And all right. of a sudden with that purple Panther episode, because it had to be expanded we yeah, got yeah. that stuff in it. Mm -hmm. um, and for the song, I think this it was the song in that show. I really like the song in that show where it's, um, I think it's called The World Goes Round and Round. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's um, a good one. It's a really, it's, 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 I mean, all of Mountie's songs were just, you wanted to just get up and dance to them. But that this yeah. one, this one just had that, it was just infectious to me. And I remember we were yeah. shooting it too, because it was Stephanie singing. It was like in a band and all of the kids were playing different instruments. And I, the mayor wasn't in it. So I was assisting uh, Pixel, which I usually yeah, did, that's right. um, yeah. on the piano. So I had to learn the piano 
notes of that song so I could realistically kind of play the song or it was just so much fun and I love the song um Chloe sang it and I guess Jody sang some of it too as stingy it was great wow nice. speaking of you know speaking of, of songs you know I remember that we are number one song it's like was oh like so big <laughs> in the internet yeah you know you never know what's that gonna become song. big yeah. Um, yeah. I remember shooting that episode. I remember all these Robbies running around and thinking, <laughs> what the hell is this? Like, this is weird. Um, but they were nice guys, but it was just another episode. You know, it was just, right. it was just yeah. another silly lazy town idea. And then it became, I think probably, I don't know. I don't know if it, if it came before Stefan passed away or after, but it became this big meme, right? This yeah, big... I remember Stefan and his house like did the song of his, right, his YouTube right. channel. It was before, yeah, before yeah, he passed. Yeah, it was yeah. just, um, and it's you just never know because I thought the funniest when we were doing it, I thought the funniest part of the episode was the stuff that Bessie and I did, but nobody remembers that. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you never know you never know yeah. yeah so okay so since you mentioned you know mayor can we hear a bit of mayor but but if you're gonna do it all right guys you know what to do oh come on jake he says cheryl blaylock <laughs> did you make cheryl do voices for you yeah well oh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah she did yeah, um for a week right from blues we'll yeah. see we'll see when she did it she made us close our eyes yeah. So, uh, so now, well, yeah, honestly, it's more wheel. Yeah. You don't have to close your eyes, although it yeah. has been a while since I've done it. Um, oh, well, welcome to Lazy Town. I'm from Lazy Town. It's so wonderful to be here doing this. What do you call it? A podcast? Oh, I love podcasts. I'm not sure what they are, but I, I, I think I love them. <laughs> yes. Let's 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 get on with the show. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that was awesome. that's amazing. amazing that was, that was that was awesome. Awesome. Ah. so so do you still keep in touch with anyone from lazy town um well uh yeah um a couple of the puppeteers um you know i work with some of them on occasion uh ron binion who played pixel yeah a very good friend of mine um he's now moved out to california but i talked to him quite a bit um, I talked to Jody a little bit, mostly those two. And, you know, occasionally we'll sort of connect on Facebook, you know, like with uh, Chloe or I did talk to Magnus uh, about a year ago, or maybe it was more than that. Um, but anyway, I mean, a little bit, a little bit. There's what some, about, what about uh, the original Stephanie, uh, Juliana? Um, so Juliana, um, I, I do, I used to, we used to, talk a lot but she's kind of you know she's moved on she um she's she's got a life outside of show business she's um i mean she's a really impressive person um but i haven't talked to her in in quite some time nice speaking of chloe it's crazy that that thing she still has the um the outfit from from the show yeah oh uh, yeah saw that i don't know where that came from or, or... we don't know either <laughs> I thought that was strange, but you know, look, I mean, <laughs> you do it. I mean, I think it, it it made a big impression. So you know, you you do what you need to do, and she's doing very well with all that social media, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. You know, musical career. So more power to her. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah definitely. Absolutely. So here's my question, I, and I feel a lot of us would know the answers. Do you know if any of the Lazy Town puppets are still around? So, um, my understanding, I don't know, I don't know the answer to that question. My understanding is that everything from the show went, um, into storage. Yeah. But not everything because there was so right. much. Right, right. I, was, right. Right. I, I would imagine that a lot of it probably uh, like uh, maybe the big set pieces, which would be expensive to store, um, might not be around anymore, but, my guess is that the puppets are stored somewhere. Um, but what you have to remember is that the, the the heads of those puppets, the outer part of it is foam latex. Yeah. 
right, um, yeah. which means that at this point, it's probably <laughs> uh, crumbled and yeah. uh, horrifying to look at, you know, the, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Stingy's old, you know, like, you know, a, a mummy from, you know, a monster movie or something. Um, <laughs> but um, I don't really know, uh, you know, um, what's underneath the foam latex the bodies and all that those are probably still intact yeah nice. and we would use new foam latex skins regularly anyway they would have to make new ones on a regular right. basis so it's not you know so those can be replaced so now aside from lazy town some other uh shows you worked on with puppetry were between the lions and the book of poo what was it like mm -hmm. working on those uh, between the lines i worked on quite a bit um that was really my first television experience i mean real deal television experience working with really um really good really accomplished puppeteers um mm -hmm. so that was an education for me um and uh it was fun um it was a great show um, oh yeah amazing show and um and and you know when you know, the, the job that I had was whatever they needed me for, right? You know, yeah. on, on a show like Lazy Town, you know, I come in in the morning, I know what I'm doing. I'm doing the mayor. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not doing the mayor, then maybe some, you know, like Ron could ask, you know, if I would assist him. But on a show like Between the Lions, you go in and you don't know what they're going to ask you to do. It could be assisting someone or, you know, right-handing someone right. doing the hand of, you know, one of the characters, or it could be, um, you know, which I always love to do, doing some background monkey or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which was the best because I love, I, I don't like assisting that much. I love doing my own characters. And when you're in the background, yes, you're not the focus and yes, you're not that important, but <laughs> you really get to do whatever you want to do. They're not directing you, really. You know, the director's focused on the, the lions in the front, right? But right. If, mm -hmm. if you're a monkey in the back, you know, in the library stacks, you make up your own business. You know, you you know, is he jumping Which up to awesome. get a book? Is he reading a book? Is he dropping the book? Is he, um, you know, what's going on? <laughs> and that you can come up. And I always used to think because I thought it was so cool because I'm thinking of The Muppet Show because... You remember on the Muppet Show and on backstage, there was that um, there was that level in the back by the dressing rooms, and occasionally you'll see a, a character kind of just standing there or walking by. Yeah, yeah. So when I was in the back on the upper on the upper level in the library, I always think I was on the Muppet Show, just doing, you know, a random chicken or something. Just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was it was fun. It was a fun thing, um, and it was and it was a good show. I mean, it was, oh, it was a shame show. that shows Wonderful like that show. can't really seem to go on for very long. Yeah, and I have some of the Between the Lines. I see. Back, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have Between the Lines COD and the Book of Pooh story. And I, and I feel left out. Yay me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it like being on the, on the Book of Pooh? I didn't do Book of Pooh all that much. Um, Book of Pooh is not my... Uh, doing that sort of that full body um tabletop or some called bunraku puppetry um yeah. and and if you were an assistant like me you know you were doing the arms or you were doing the legs and yeah. and that some you have to wear all the green screen things and, and wearing would... all that junk yeah. some puppeteers yeah. like that um for me what's fun about puppetry is doing your own character and sort of even though you're being directed and even though you have a script to follow, you're kind of calling your own shots, um, especially puppeteers, because, you know, we all look at monitors while we're performing. Mm -hmm. Right. You're right. kind of yeah. directing yep. yourself in your own mind. You're composing the shot. But when you're assisting like that, particularly something that's as meticulous and scientific as the legs going this way and that way and the arms moving, you know, how do we give the illusion of walking it was more science than art for me. Right. Um, yeah. And for me, uh, some puppeteers really love that stuff. And I never, yeah. you know, my friend Ron Binion loves that kind of puppetry. Yeah. He loves it. And we yeah. did it a little bit in the beginning of Lazy Town. And then we just kind of gave up because the puppets were way too big for it. Yeah. Uh, but um, 
I so 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 that's not the kind of thing that I love to yeah. do. Um, I just like having my own guy and and sort right. of yeah having fun mm-hmm. with. Him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I have a kind of, I have an interesting question. So, do you remember which character you SS puppeteered for between the lines? Well, like I said, it, every day it was something different. Yeah. So right. you know, I would come in and and um, th- you know, we had a whole bunch of monkeys, and there were chickens. Mm-hmm. I remember those were like the background characters. Yeah. And then yeah. and then I did a lot of right handing, like I right handed Theo. Um, and I, and I also assisted, uh, Lionel, the, the son a bit. Nice. Um, nice. and there were other like little oddball characters too. Um, there was a, there was like a pelican or something. I mean, it was oh, just yeah. every day. It was something different. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So this may be a interesting question do you have any favorite episodes from between the lions between the lions wasn't a show that i like watched you know you know religiously um i think so the only ones that i really remember are ones that i um participated in right um i remember we did an insert that was that i that was great where the the puppets were all they all were built at at the University of Connecticut, they were these uh-huh. flat, um, these big, like almost life-size flat things for a little insert we did. Um, and uh, that was cool because that was different. You know, it yeah. wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't what we usually did. I mean, that's, I remember, gosh, what else? Um, I remember doing this thing where they kept adding characters to a room and it was supposed to be a takeoff on or an homage to a Marx Brothers scene. It was a night at the opera where they all are in the state room. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and, they all, and so it was like hmm. all these puppeteers with all these puppets, like we were just kind of crowding all around. And <laughs> yeah. I think they even put like plexiglass in front of us so that we can smush like our faces up against it. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's fun when you get to do weird stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. 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 But again, between the lions is such an excellent show. It really Most. is. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. one of the things I want to show. So I kind of started watching a puppetry is one of them is between the lions. So yeah. it's where I, I met my writing partner who I still work with today, Louise Gicko. Who, oh, wow. Uh, oh, <laughs> who you know had a who who worked for muppets uh for for in their book division for many years and then um started to work on between the lions and and that's and i knew she was a great writer and so i connected with her and we we still work together today so nice that was an important show for me oh yeah sure definitely so yeah. do you have any lazy time mem- memorabilia or anything from your puppetry work that you like to show or you can talk about <laughs> well, don't tell anyone because I think I slight this. Um, this is the mayor's mug. Oh, <laughs> oh, nice. wow. oh my god! <laughs> oh my oh, gosh! Cool. Wow! But there were so many of these that I don't think they really miss them. But it's such <laughs> oh, okay, it's, I like I don't even know what this is made of. It's foam, I think. Um, they did such an amazing job. The um, the the prop guys and the art guys on the mm-hmm. show because everything had to be made like you couldn't go out and buy a mug for the show it had to be made specifically for this world of lazy mm-hmm. time which had its own unique look um and so um i think i just figured i should take this <laughs> with <my hand. laughs> and then and this we were given so i'm not culpable here but um so I don't know if you know what this piece of foam is. This, um, there was a show, an episode where um, there was like this taffy machine and it would spit blocks of taffy out and they couldn't figure out a way to stop it. So the whole yes, town, I remember that episode. The whole yes. town became I remember overrun that. with taffy. And mm, a lot yeah, of it was CG, but some of, a lot of it was real. It was these practical pieces of foam. And there was, I mean, there were literally like thousands of these. And I think at the end of the shoot, they gave us each 
a block of taffy. And I remember, wow, I remember performing the mayor um, as we all had to do in a bait, like think of like a ball pit, like, you know, at a arcade or whatever. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was, you know, in the ball pit with which, but it was all of these blocks of foam and the mayor sticking out of it, you know, screaming for help um, and trying to walk my way through it. And it's not easy to walk through it. No, <laughs> no, no, not at all. There were a lot of physical, um, compromising physical positions on Lazy Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So those are my mementos, mm -hmm. I think. Maybe there's some others I can't think of. Oh, it's fine. I'm sure, I'm sure Mayor Mintz means well would be proud of that mug. I'm sure he still is. He is. He <laughs> is. Yes. So... <laughs> This is this is a really interesting question here. If you could go back in time, is there a Muppet project you wish you had the chance to work on? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, I think it would have been amazing to work with any of those guys. Um, you know, while they were, you know, really sort of hitting their stride. Um, I would have done anything like in that period. Um you know, it would have been fun to work on on the Muppet Show because you know, again, there were so many like little corners and nooks and crannies and things that you could do that that would be funny and silly. Um, and I think that they would have welcomed that. That's what one of the things that made that show so great. Um, but yeah, I, that that would have been fantastic. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. So in addition to your puppetry work, you also wrote for projects such as Onoa and Chicken and Chips. What was it like working on those? Well, um, Onoa was a thing we did with PBS. Um, yeah. I and um, that was that was all, that <laughs> that was an interesting experience because it's my first like sort of big writing thing and working mm -hmm. for um you know an organization as venerable as as pbs and and you know it's not as simple as just kind of like writing something and saying okay here do it i mean it goes through all these meetings and and um it's um it was fun and i was really proud of it um you know it's it's really i was i was proud that you know we we created something like just, I mean, I remember sitting with Louise at her, you know, dining room table and coming up with the idea and coming up with, you know, the characters and the title and everything. Um, and then having that, you know, when you create something and then seeing it animated and animation was new to me too, because I had spent most of my career in puppetry. Right. So right. learning how to work with animators and, you know, the, the, the joy of sort of seeing what you've done, um, animated i mean that's a whole other world that's a whole other process and right. working with the voice actors and and you know i got to direct them a little bit and um just having it sort of really all be our creation was was really i was proud of that and i was proud you know we got we were nominated twice for an emmy for that and oh nice um, and awesome. i was really proud that because most of the people I know, who, I know a lot of people, you know, with Emmys who've been nominated for Emmys, and most of them are for shows that, you know, like Sesame Street that existed long before they did. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was so proud that this was something that we created that got this recognition um, that that wouldn't exist if it weren't for us. That's what's great about creativity, right? Yeah, you know, definitely. You know, this podcast, guys, definitely. would not exist. If it were not for you guys, I mean, it was, Definitely, you know, yeah. like, think about mm -hmm. it's a wonderful life. Like if you never existed, this podcast wouldn't exist. Um, right. exactly. so if I never existed, exactly. you know, oh, no, it wouldn't exist. It's it's um, it's 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 what's magical, I think, about being about doing this kind of work. So exactly. I was very proud of him. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Can you share any other projects that you're working on now? Well, I'm working on two animated projects, but I can't really talk much about them because we don't, yeah. they're not ready to right. go. Um, yeah, but I'm working now. with yeah, a, yeah. a good That's fine. A company um, in Toronto, and um, I'm excited nice. about them. Um, I did something recently that I'm incredibly proud of, and it's, a, it's an animated series um, 
shown in Africa, throughout Africa, about dental care, which for kids is a big issue. For adults, it's a big issue there, but particularly for kids. Um, and um, so I got to create the show and getting to do that show and, and sort of getting to see it through from beginning to end and and seeing pictures they go into schools and they show the show and and um they they it's it's aired like on a on a kids channel there um that's been very gratifying for me and i hope i hope we do more we i was just talking about with with them about doing more for that nice awesome really nice awesome. so as a puppeteer what challenges would you say would you say you faced during your career well, there are challenges in getting, getting work because it's very right. competitive. Um, you know, it's not like acting where if you're playing, if an actor's playing one role, they can't really play another role at the same time. But puppeteers, a puppeteer can play, you know, five different characters on one show and four <laughs> right. different characters on another show. Yeah. Um, and it's a very insular community. You know, everyone's very chummy with each other. So, mm -hmm. so there are challenges in that respect. Um, once you're working, um, there are immense challenges. Um, you know, Lazy Town was a huge challenge because, because of the puppets, because the puppets were big. Um, mm -hmm. they were, you know, look, the Muppets were made by Jim Henson, who was a puppeteer and he understood mm -hmm. the challenges and he understood what, what was important when it came to puppetry, when it came to performance. Exactly. And, you know, Lazy Town, the puppets were designed and built by an effects house, you know, and, and they were made, they were signed off by Magnus, who had never had any experience with that kind of thing before. And they were huge and they had these big foam rubber heads and they looked cool, but they presented huge puppeteering challenges. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, real physical challenges. I mean, we used to get, Magnus had had a massage therapist come into the studio at least once a week, I think sometimes twice a week to give us massages, not because, you know, we were these decadent, you know, entitled puppeteers and we wanted massages, but because we needed them. Um, right. They, you know, these were, it was very challenging. And there were times when I remember I thought I was going to just keel over and die. Um, and, um, and you're put, and, 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 and just to speak more generally, Jake, about what a cha what challenges you can face, Often, and this was certainly the case with Lazy Town in the beginning, but it's been the case on almost every production I've ever worked on. The people who are producing the show, directing the show, designing the sets, da da da, don't really understand what a puppeteer needs, what a what a puppet needs. So there's often this sort of gap of communication. Um, the sets are sometimes too high. They're sometimes too low. They're, they're not shooting it the right way in, in the sense that the camera angle is making it impossible for you to get your head out of the shot. Um, or, or they're shooting too long. Look, you're going to cut this up into little two second shots anyway. Just shoot, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, there's often sort of this learning curve that exists on shows where puppets are new to the production. And um, that's that's often a challenge that never goes away unless you're working for Henson, unless you're working, you know, for Sesame, which has been doing this for 50 some odd years. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what what piece of advice would you give to anyone who wants to get into puppetry? Um, I would say. Don't. The, the 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 really good puppeteers that I know, the successful ones, the interesting ones, don't just perform. Mm -hmm. uh, most puppeteers come at it from some other angle. You know, like I came at it from writing, and that gives me an understanding of of a scene. You know, the structure of a scene and how to play a scene. Like, what's the arc here? Where do we start? Where do we end? What are the highs and the lows? Mm -hmm. A lot of puppeteers come from puppet building, which is incredibly mm. oh, yeah. useful if you're a puppeteer. Yeah. 
yeah. because you know yeah, yeah. the ins and outs of that puppet. If something happens on set and there's no one else to help you, you know how to sort of rip it up and, you know, you know, rig something and fix it. So having sort of a, a whole ex uh, understanding, a holistic understanding of that puppet is very important. There are puppeteers who come from, you know, music or musical theater. You know, it's it's yeah. not just one thing. Um, I mean, any puppet, any real puppeteer, any really good puppeteer has other skills, right? I mean, Jim Henson did a zillion things. Frank Oz ended up writing and directing. Um, Jerry Nelson was this incredible. He could have had an amazing career as a musician if he had never yeah. even met Jim Henson. Richard Hunt, again, like acting, yeah. music. Um, Dave Golds came from the puppet shop. You know, he was building puppets. So I often sort of wince a little when I, I meet puppeteers where it's that's all they want to do is stick their hand up in the air and, and move it. Because I really feel like you have to have some other understanding that informs the whole thing, some other mm -hmm. skill. And also, how many of us can make a career out of just puppeteering? You Not know what right, I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, and so that's that's my advice off the top of my head. Yeah. So this is a, so this is a question for both you and the mayor. What would the both of you like to say to the fans and supporters of uh, your work in of Lazy Town? Uh, well, I would like to say thank you. I love hearing from Lazy Town fans. Like when Jake contacts me, I always love that. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, it's. Um, it's, I think it's really special because there are not a lot of shows that people still remember. I mean, when did we do the first episode? It was uh, 2000, 2004. 2004. Yeah, which almost is, 20 which is the years year ago. Was, which, is, which, is, which is that year I was born. So. Which is the year you were born. <laughs> yeah, so I feel really... <laughs> I mean, one of the things is it makes me feel really old. Um, but that's okay because it's yeah. it has this life that's just... People still remember it. I mean, people, I always think it's funny on Twitter, like every now and then someone will be like, Here, here's a picture of my science teacher. Doesn't he look like Mayor Meanswell? <laughs> there are tons apparently of science teachers out there who look like Mayor Meanswell. Um, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. funny. And so it, it's, it's still, you know, it has a life. And most shows now, I mean, content now is so disposable it's like there are so many shows on streaming services and here and there that like yeah we talk about for a week and then we totally forget about because a new show comes along right um, right mm -hmm. yeah and so that's I, when, one of the nice things about your podcast i think is that you you keep these shows alive that, mm -hmm. that would, would be sort of steamrolled over if 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 we did if you didn't do that yeah um, right exactly and the mayor would say um you know uh well thank you very much i love i certainly love being mayor and if you're ever in the area please stop by and and i'm sure miss busybody would love to cook you up bake you up a special cake oh she's uh, no you don't she she's she walked away she was, <laughs> <laughs> just say hello say just say <laughs> don't, don't worry about her <laughs> bye 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 from lazy town <laughs> that's awesome we'd be more than happy to visit you man we'd be yes. more than happy to yes. anytime anytime yeah, that'd be oh, awesome anytime. yes yes anytime oh so gosh. so if people want to contact you where can people find you <laughs> um, <laughs> um if they want to contact me, well, they can find me on Twitter, I guess. Um, right? I don't even know what my Twitter thing is, but I check Twitter all the time, just like for the news and stuff. So if you contact, mm -hmm. just type in David Matthew Feldman, you should find me. On anyway, since yeah. we're about to wrap up, Jake, how about you close us out with the last question? Yeah. So the question that we always ask for the last, we always um, question question to a guest you know at the end, end of every every episode so of course this podcast is called jake's happy nostalgia show when you think of nostalgia what do you think of or how would you define your own words you know the word nostalgia what i think of is i think if if most of us are lucky if we're lucky then our 
childhoods are really like the best time. Um, maybe yeah. not the best time in our lives. You know, I think you get older <laughs> and you, right. you have kids of your own and that's pretty, that's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. But there's something special about our childhoods. And what the reason I say lucky is because a lot of kids don't have that, you know, yeah. um, their experiences, uh, you know, are, are, are experiences they would prefer to forget. Right. Um, but maybe mm -hmm. there's something in there that they would like to remember and that's that's nostalgia um and that's you know the friends that they make on television the friends that they make at the movies um the mm -hmm. friends that they make in in you know their dolls or their toys um and there's nothing like that in your life as you get older you know there's you know my favorite movie is the wizard of oz and it's always oh yeah been, yeah it's Classic. always been my favorite movie. And I think part of, I think there are two reasons for that. One, it's a great movie, but two, the first time I saw it was when I was four years old, you know, and I saw it wow. at home sitting on my couch in my, in my living room with my dad, you know, and it, it came on once a year at that time. You could only watch it once a year. Yeah, that's it, right. Yeah. And it was like Christmas. It was my Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And there's no... <laughs> There's there's no replacing that feeling. So now when mm. I watch it, it gives me such an amazing feeling. It's almost medicinal. You know, yeah. it's almost like somebody gave me this medicine to drink and it just makes me feel better. Um, that's nostalgia to me. It's 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 going back to that feeling that we that very particular feeling that we can only get when we're young. Exactly. Um yeah. And, uh, you know, the Wizard of Oz represents that to me. And and those Muppet, you know, the, 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 those Muppet years, you know, the Muppet show and, and the Muppet movie, those years for those characters. And I can tell, you know, like from a mile away, if a picture of Kermit is from 1978 or it's from 2022, like I can tell immediately. Um, so it, it's it's a very finely tuned thing for me. Um, and that's uh, that's nostalgia for me. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Well, David, on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for being on the yes, podcast. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, this is wonderful. Blast talking to you. And okay, thank you. Guys you guys are terrific. Yes, yeah, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. For, thank you. I'm glad we have got, got enough time for, you know, for doing this. And yeah. I just want to say something. Not just you, David, but as well as Mayor, for, for both of you being part of our childhoods and, you know, yeah. still remember Lisa Town Definitely. and and keep up, you know, you're doing, you did a great job for what you've done, for what for you being part of our childhoods, being our, part of our life, and, you know, keep up your good work and see what's next for you. Thank you for um a couple months ago sending me the birthday shout out. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. You were yeah. the one. Oh, that was Jake. You asked me to do that for him. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Yes. I did. That is so funny. I, you know, <laughs> I did that. We were on vacation in Maine, and I remember doing that in the oh, hotel wow. room in oh, Maine. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got it. I'm glad you got it. Uh, say, that's say, awesome. Say, man, I think Jakey's got an idea for your birthday next month. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Hey, well, it works. Well, again, David, thank you so much for being on, and uh, keep in touch, and I'll let you know when this. Yeah. Uh, we'll let you know when great. this uh, goes up. Mm -hmm. It's public. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Thank All right, you. yeah. Take care, David. All right, take care, David. Bye -bye. Take care, Mayor. Bye. Yeah. I will, you too. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. And well, it's, and it's goodbye from us as well. Goodbye Thanks, from us as well. Thanks for joining us. Another episode of Jake's Happy Salad Show to a close. We've absolutely enjoyed our time with David Matthew Feldman and Mayor Milford yes. Meanswell yes. as well. So, from all of us to all of you, um, again, as uh, taping wise, this is our first interview of the year. Yes, lots of exciting things coming up. And, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, enjoying our recent interview with uh, Emily Pearl Kingsley. Well, it'll probably it'll it'll, well, it'll be up by the time it airs. So yeah. just go. So just go back and watch it. Yeah, go go back and watch <laughs> that episode. Yeah, yep. you'll well, love anyway, it. From all of us, to all of you, thanks for tuning into another episode, and remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye. Take care, everyone, and bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye. <laughs>